Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about pandas data frames, which are a two-dimensional data structure in the pandas package for Python that allow you to work with heterogeneous data types. Now, although this lesson is focused on data frames, we're actually going to start by learning about pandas series, which are a one-dimensional data object in pandas that are used to build up to the data frames, which are two-dimensional objects. So to start off with, to create our first series, we're going to start by importing the two libraries we need. We're going to import NumPy again. So we're gonna say import NumPy as NP. And then we're also going to import the pandas library, which includes the series and the data frame objects. So to do that, we're gonna say import pandas, and then we're gonna say as PD. So importing pandas as PD will just allow us to access pandas and all of its functions using this nickname instead of having to write the whole thing pandas. And pretty much everybody does this, so it's just good to get used to importing these two packages using these two nicknames. Now a pandas series is very similar to the NumPy arrays we learned about in the previous lesson. The main difference being that with a panda series, you can also define indices of a given label for each of the index positions in the series. So instead of having to access items in a panda series using numerical indexing, you can actually assign them labels and then access items using those labels. So here we're going to show how to make a series. We're going to say my series and set it equal to this function call. So we want to call the pandas library. So pd.series is the function. And then you just pass in a list of the data that you want to turn into the series. So our data is just going to be a few numbers here. And you also pass in the labels you want to associate with the indices for each of the values. So for that, you pass index equals and then a list of those indices. So we're going to just label them A through D. And when we run this, we see we have successfully created a series with the indices we specified and their corresponding values. Now you can alternatively create a series using a dictionary to specify both the data values and the indices at the same time. So to do that, we will define a new dictionary and the keys in the dictionary will be the index values and then the values in the dictionary will end up being the data values in the series. So if we define this new dictionary here with some values in it, and then we pass that dictionary to pd.series, it will convert this into a series object where the keys will be extracted into indices and the values into the values. And similar to a dictionary then, we can access values using the associated labels that we assign to them. So for instance, if we wanted to see the value associated with the index A, we can just pass in A into the indexer into the series instead of having to know exactly what the numerical index is. But if we did know the numerical index, we could use that too. So we assigned A to the first value, so we can access the first element by using the zeroth index. So this will also get us the value two there, but this gives us different options for accessing elements. If you take a slice of a series, you'll actually get both the values and labels contained in the slice. So here we're going to slice two values of my series, and you can see we return both the values, but also the associated index labels. And if you perform mathematical operations on series, it will perform them element-wise based on the labels assigned to each element. So for instance, if we add my series to itself, it will use the indexes we gave to align which elements to add to which elements. So if we do that, it will essentially add A to A, B to B, C to C, D to D, and essentially doubling each of those values. Now, if you try to perform a math operation like this on a series with mismatched labels, you will end up introducing NANs into your data wherever the labels can't be matched. NAN stands for not a number. So we'll show that. We'll add my series to the my series two above, and they didn't have the same index labels. So when we perform that, the ones that can be matched will be matched and the math will perform successfully. So both my series and my series two had A, B, and C as indexes that were defined, but they don't have the index D and X in common. D was only in my series one, and X 
was only in my series two. So since those could not be matched based on the indices, the return value of that operation for those indices is not a number. Other than this index labeling, series behave much like arrays in NumPy. And in fact, many of the NumPy array functions we learned about in the previous lesson will work on series as well, such as mean. So for instance, we could say np.mean, numpy.mean, and run it on my series. Well, this is a pandas series, not a NumPy array, but it will still work on that because a lot of the functions in pandas are built up using things from NumPy. Now that we know the basics of panda series, we'll start learning about pandas data frames. Now a data frame is a two dimensional table with labeled columns that can each hold different types of data. Data frames are essentially a Python implementation of the types of tables you'd see in an Excel workbook or SQL database. Pandas data frames are the de facto standard data structure for working with tabular data in Python. So we'll be using them throughout the remainder of this guide. You can create data frames using a variety of different data sources, including Python dictionaries, two dimensional NumPy arrays and series using the pd.dataframe function. So we'll show how to do that below. So here we're going to create a new pandas data frame. And we're going to do this with a dictionary in this case. So first we're going to define a dictionary that's going to contain all the information needed to make the data frame. So when you're making a data frame out of a dictionary, keys become the names of the columns in the data frame. And then the values associated with the keys become the data that populates those columns. So since the values of the dictionary populate the data in the columns, you'll generally want to be passing in sequence data structures that hold multiple values because usually your table is going to have several rows that have different records. So for instance, this dictionary we're creating is going to create three rows. That means for every single column we pass in, we're going to need three data values. And you can pass in different sequence data structures to accomplish this. So for the name column, we're going to pass in a list of three different names. For age, we're going to pass in a NumPy array of three different age values. For weight, we'll pass in a tuple of three different values. For height, we're passing in a pandas series of three different values that are labeled. And actually for these other two values, siblings and gender, we're not even passing in a sequence data structure, we're passing in single values. So here we're gonna say siblings one and gender is just a string. And we'll see what happens when we create the data frame. So we're gonna take this dictionary and then to make the data frame from it, we'll say pd.dataframe and just run it on the dictionary. And that will convert it into a data frame called df. And then we'll just type df here to show what the data frame looks like. So let's run this and see what we get. So you can see we've constructed a data frame that is essentially a two dimensional table and all of the sequential data structures we passed in were successfully converted into columns. So even though there were different types, a list, a NumPy array, a pandas series, and what was the other one? A tuple, all four of those different sequence data structures are suitable for being passed in and turned into columns. And in the case where we only passed in a single value, you can see here that it still actually worked. And what it does is it just fills the entire column with that one value. So even though we only passed in one here, it just said, well, I'll fill the whole column with one, one then. And for the gender column, we just passed in the string M and it was like, all right, we'll just fill the whole column with M's. And note that the columns were extracted directly from the keys in the dictionary. So we knew that was going to happen. But also notice that there is a index column on this side, Joe, Bob, and Franz, that is different than the names column. This is actually a row index. And we didn't specifically supply a row index when we made the data frame. What happened here is that one of our data columns was a pandas series, and that series had an index specified. So when we made the pandas data frame, it knew that there was this index here, so it used that as the row index for the data frame. 
if we didn't construct this data frame with a pandas series that already had an index, it would just have simply used numbers as the index. So we'll show what that would look like below. We're going to create a new dictionary that's the same thing as above, except we're going to use a list for height instead of the pandas series that had indices. And when we run that, we'll just see that it's the same data frame pretty much, except these indices now are just numbers instead of the named ones that we had before. So if you want to provide custom row labels at the time of creating a data frame, because perhaps you're not making it from an existing Panda series like that, you can do that when you construct the data frame. So I'll say pd.dataframe again and pass in the data, but we'll supply an additional argument, comma, index equals, and then you can pass in a sequence of different labels you want to use for the rows. In this case, we're going to set it equal to the names column. So the, the same thing we did before, essentially. Now a data frame will behave like a dictionary of pandas series objects that each have the same length and indices. This means we can get add and delete columns from a data frame the same way we would when dealing with a standard Python dictionary. For instance, if we want to see the weight column of a, the data frame, we can just say the name of the data frame and index into weight, and that will give us the data in that column. Alternatively, you can also access columns in pandas using dot notation. So instead of having to do this standard Python indexing where you use the square brackets and then pass something in, you can just do this, the name of the data frame dot and then the name of the column. So in this case, we'll see weight again. So we'll say df2.weight and that will do the exact same thing. This is just kind of a quicker shorthand way of doing it. So if we wanted to delete a column, we can use the normal dictionary deletion for that. So we could say del and then just specify the data frame and the column we want to get rid of. And you can also add new columns in the same way you would add new objects to a dictionary, just by specifying the name of the data frame, passing in the name of the new column you want to as a string inside of the indexer, and then pass in the data you want to store. Of course, since this is a two-dimensional object as a data frame, you want to pass in data that is the same length as the other data objects in the data frame. So we know that our data frame has three rows. So when we add this new IQ column, we want to make sure we pass in three values so that it matches the current size of the data. If you don't pass something in that matches the number of rows in the data set, it will just fill the rows with that value, kind of like when we created it and we only passed in the number one or M for the gender. So for instance, if we wanted to make a new column called married and we only just passed in false instead of a list of say different values, it'll just fill that whole column with falses. Now, if you insert a pandas series into an existing data frame, it will be matched up based on indices. And then any indices that are unmatched will be left with not a number of values. You can index into both rows and columns by name using df.lock. So I'll show how to do that. We're gonna say our data frame here, df2.lock. And if we only pass in one thing, that will get us the row associated with that index. So here we're going to get the row Joe. But if we say passed in two different things, we can get both a specific row and column. So we say df2.lock Joe and then comma IQ. That's saying we want the values in the row Joe and the column IQ. So this will get one specific value when we run that. You can also take slices actually across indices using colons, similar to what you can do with numerical indices in Python. So if we said df2.lock and we did a slice from Joe to Bob, well, we get all the values in that range, depending on how the data structure was created. In this case, Joe and Bob are right next to each other, so we'll get these two rows. And then we're going to slice, comma, the columns, IQ to college. So that will slice us these three columns. So when we run that, we should get these three columns just for Joe and Bob. So we'll run that and see that that is the result.
So this dot lock way of accessing data in a pandas data frame is label based indexing. So here we're passing in row and column labels. If you want to access rows and columns instead by index values or integers, you can do that too. You just need to use I lock instead of lock. So we'll show an example of that. So here, instead of passing in an actual label, we can just say df2 dot I lock and then get whatever row is at index position zero. In this case, we know it's labeled and it's Bob, but we may have a pandas data frame that was never assigned a label. And then we would have to get rows using this sort of numerical indexing. Now you can also select rows by passing in a sequence of true false values. This is known as a logical index and it will get all the rows where the value is true. So here, if we make a Boolean or logical index of false, true, true, well, that's going to get us back everything other than the first row, because the first row or zeroth row is false. So it's not going to get that. But the other two rows are true. So when we run that. We see we get Bob and Franz there. This sort of logical indexing is extremely useful. You'll be using this all the time in your data science and data analytics career. So it's good to get used to doing this because you can use it with comparisons and that allows you to subset your data frames in different ways based on the results of those comparisons. So it's a very helpful way of accessing data that conforms to some specific constraints. So we'll give an example of that here. We're going to, in this case, create a new Boolean index, but instead of just specifying things ourselves, it's going to be the result of a logical check. So our Boolean index here is going to be equal to our data frames age column and whether that the values there are greater than 12. So basically this is creating a sequence of true false values where every value corresponds to whether the age for that record is greater than 12. And if we use that index to index back into the data frame, this will extract each row where that person's age is greater than 12. Now note that you can do this sort of logical indexing all in one fell swoop without first assigning a Boolean index like this. So we, we could have just done this instead of assigning the Boolean index first, we could just say pass this entire logical construction right into the indexer for the data frame. And that will produce the same result. It's just kind of a quicker way of doing it without having to go through that extra step. Now we will wrap up this lesson by going through some different ways of exploring data frames. So oftentimes when you get a data frame in Python, it's not going to be some data set you created yourself within Python. It will be something that you're loading in from an external source, such as an Excel file or a comma separated values file of some kind. And it's maybe data you've never seen before and you need to explore it to figure out what's even in the data set. So we're just going to go through some examples of how you might do that. So to start with, we're going to load in a new data set. This is going to be the Titanic competition data set on Kaggle. It's essentially just records of the Titanic disaster. And we're going to be using this data set as a motivating example for this lesson and several lessons in the future where we're going to be doing prediction on whether passengers survived or perished in the Titanic disaster. But for this one, we're just going to be looking at the data. So we'll start by storing our data, Titanic train. This is something you don't really need to know right now. In fact, in the next lesson, we're going to be going over reading and writing data into Python. So we'll be learning much more about this and other functions similar to this in the next lesson. And we'll just read that in and check the type. And you can see that it has been read in as a pandas data frame. Now, a good first thing to do after you read some data in is get a sense of how big it is. And you can do that with the dot shape attribute of a data frame. So to do that, you just type the name of the data frame and then say dot shape, and that will show you the dimensions. This is just like the numpy dot shape that you can do with two dimensional or multi dimensional numpy arrays. So here we see that the data has 891 rows and 12 columns. Now you can check the first few rows of a data frame using dot head, and then you can specify how many rows you want to see. So here we're going to check the first six rows of the data frame by saying Titanic train dot head six. That will show us the first six rows, which should give us some idea of what the data looks like here. Now, just like dot head, you can also check rows at the end of a data frame with dot tail. So if we say 
the name of the data frame dot tail six we'll get the last six rows and we'll notice that in our data frame the rows do not have labels they just have integers as the labels because no labels were specified we could create a new index if we wanted to using one of the columns so we'll show how to do that here we're going to take the name column the names of the passengers and turn that into the row index names so to set the indices for the rows you can use dot index to do that so we're going to set the data frame dot index equal to name column titanic train name and then we're going to delete that column. And now if we print out, say, the first 10 values of the row indices, they will be the names that were in the name column. If you want to access the names of the columns, you can use the dot columns attribute of the data frame. So here if we say titanic train dot columns, that will just show us what all the column labels are. Now one very useful function to run on a data frame in pandas is the dot describe function. This will show summary statistics of the various columns. This can be a good way to get some idea of the shape of the data as you have numeric columns. So it'll give you information like the minimum and maximum values, the mean and median, which just gives you an idea of the distribution of the values you're going to see. So we'll do titanic train dot describe and see the summary statistics we get. You can see that the columns that are not numeric are not included in describe. So all of those were removed and only the numeric columns were kept. But now we can see for all the numeric columns some various summary statistics. Now since the columns of pandas data frames are series and series are closely related to NumPy's arrays, Many of the functions for NumPy arrays actually work directly on data frames and will operate on the columns of those data frames if you set axis equal to zero. So in this case, we can say np.mean, that gets us the mean of our data frame, and we'll say comma axis equals zero. That means operate along the columns. So this is a quick way, for instance, we can get the average of every single column. One final very useful function you can use on data frames to get a general sense of their overall structure is .info. So here we're going to say titanic train .info, and when we run this it shows us a whole bunch of different information about the data frame. For instance, it shows us how many entries there are, how many columns there are. It provides a list of the columns, how many entries they have, and what types of objects are in the columns a summary of the different data types that are in the data frame, and also shows how much memory the data frame is using up. This introduction really only scratches the surface of the different types of operations you can do with Pandas data frames. We'll be learning many more in future lessons, but this is enough for us to get started. So now that we have many of the tools we need in order to store data, we need to learn how to actually gain access to data and read it into our Python environment. So in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to read and write data with Python with a focus on doing it with Pandas data frames. If you found this video useful, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I will see you again next time.